how is that first 311 miles? I'm doing good. It's, uh, I think, it's only my second run, but I think the step for me was a little bit, not as I remember it last year, a little bit worse, but not bad, not overcomable. And uh, I still don't know how I got through the gorge. But <laughs> it is called the infamous Dalzell Gorge. Uh -huh. But I came through it. Right, also for the Dalzell Gorge and the steps, I put two, uh, two kids up front because I'm running two year olds. And these two kids are drivers. And I think that's what got me through. What's their names? Uh, Oscar and uh, Willie. Oscar and Willie? Oscar and Willie. <laughs> these two actually. These two, Oscar and Willie? Yeah. The kids, huh? Big kids. Uh, I saw that you got a broken sled there. What's the plan with that? <laughs> it must have been a mogul because outside the burn, normally sleds break in the burn, right? Uh -huh. Well, that's what um, the experienced marshals, the veterans, tell us. Um, after 32 miles outside of Rhone, I camped for a few hours and I changed my runner plastic because that was shot. And uh, I would not have been able to do it with my runner plastic. So that was a mogul with front and yeah just snapped enough. Are you gonna get a new sled or are you gonna fix yeah, it? Yeah, my uh, replacement sled is in uh, Nikolai. So I'm trying to get it from Nikolai and then um, also, if that doesn't happen, I'm gonna use Kelly Maxner's sled because he runs for Dallas and I run for me. So we both, we probably in the dog families. <laughs> so he said, cause he's changing sled and he said, I can use his, so. But his sled is yay small. Uh -huh. Mine is yay big. I put in my kitchen zinc and my flat screen TV and everything. I don't know how I'm gonna fit my stuff in that one, but maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> maybe it's a time to learn under pressure what you need and what you might think you need. You'll have to watch your Netflix on your phone instead of your big screen TV. My phone is switched off coming through um, a rainy pass. I left around about one o'clock the morning and it was clear. I mean, bright moon, full moon, stars are out and you could see everything. And I wanted to take a, a video, take my phone out because he switched off. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, no, it's just when you start taking pictures in my, that's my personal opinion. If you start taking pictures, the race doesn't, this adventure doesn't belong to you. It belongs to a camera lens. I want everything up here. Does it make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Sound like a philosopher. For what? Take a picture and show it to someone else and it's like, oh, nice picture and move on. No feeling, no emotion. There's nothing to do then. Besides, when all the mushers start taking the pictures, we're gonna be out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, you, with me around, you, your job is secured. <laughs> I don't, I know how my camera works, but that knows. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, but it was such a beautiful experience. That's the thing so far I'll, I will remember and this morning I nearly got happy to see the sun peek through the clouds when leaving because I left Nikolai around about six mm -hmm. and it was like a t two hours out and I saw the sun breaking through and said yes <laughs> I don't want to pray too much <laughs> then I give the man upstairs my address and he knows where to find me I'm just this is a joke don't put it on don't put that on, <laughs> don't put that on. <laughs> He watches our channel. <laughs> yeah, channel two. I know. Jesus watches channel two. <laughs> Do he, you, uh, he watches your channel. Yeah. Uh, when you have your two, you know, the young ones up front, is that kind of part of it that they don't actually? They have to trust you, obviously. They don't know what they're getting into. Both, vice versa. It's. Um, I was thinking. You I mean you think a lot when you're on the runners. Why do you do this? Um, I'm from South Africa, I wasn't born into this kind of, normally when you're born into it as from a young age, you start mushing and mushing and mushing. And I did draw it becomes a lifestyle for me. Last year it was a one and done. So I'm back to see if I can make a two and done. Um, why do you do it is for me taking these two year olds, because I run two year olds and taking them to see how they grow. And the, the trust, the bond of trust between dog and man and man and dog. That's why. Right. Special stuff? Yeah, that's why. It's just when you come to feed, they look at you. When you hook them up, they look at you. Right? They depend on each other yeah. for life, literally. Oscar, um, no, this is Ero, the upcoming superstar. How hard is it after the race when you have to separate from these guys? Hard. 
it's hard. But they move on. They do summer tours and whatever keeps them busy and get the. But it's hard. They remember you? Huh? Do they remember you when you come back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think so. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but when they, they must be some nice part, a, a positive recognition when they hear an old familiar voice and say, that voice sounds good. I'm going to go for it. As long as you bring snacks. <laughs> no. No. They, <laughs> they hear you. Snacks is a luxury. No, snacks is a necessity for them. Yeah, they uh, they snack to get food in and hydration in. And sometimes they don't eat a wet meal, and you got to give them frozen beef snacks because they are, I think, twenty percent water in, mm -hmm. and the rest is beef. So they got to eat. Yeah. How much are you uh, keeping up with the folks in South Africa that are watching your adventure from afar? I, how can I put it? I'm not keeping up, but I do have a Facebook page, and my foundation stuff. Um, they keep up a little. I, I have two social media people who volunteer their time and work for it. And before I left, there was good responses. Because this year, last year, I donated my entire I did rod to uh, um, the veterans. But this year, um, Tusk approached me a few weeks ago, which is uh, His Royal Highness Prince of Wales is an honorary member of Tusk anti-poaching and help their uh, wildlife ranger canines so it's for the dogs by the dogs I like that so we these uh, 14 now 13 is gonna run a thousand miles to raise money for that hounds in Africa tracking po poachers and injured game and all the necessities that go with protecting wildlife how determined are you to get to Nome to make this a two and done and also to deep and proud, I guess? You look me in your eyes and then you tell me, yes, I am. Yeah, I'll get to Nome. What are you going to do with your belt buckle? I don't know yet. <laughs> 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 I I He's just trying to get there. <laughs> I just trying to get Nome. The first thing, I don't care about the belt buckle. I just want a good scotch. <laughs> There you go. Local it's bar and no. We'll see how that goes. We'll catch up with you there. I look yeah, forward we'll to find you, yeah. man.